I know it's the last day, but come on. <laughs> Nearly there. Nearly there. You're very welcome to Panaconf. Um, before we begin, I just want to say that there was a speaker scheduled this afternoon from Lufthansa uh, to let anybody know that was here to see that speaker. Unfortunately, they weren't able to make it. I think they missed a the flight. I'm here all night. Um, so, <clears throat> it's the last day. How's everybody doing? Cool. Come on, how's everybody doing? These guys over here already started drinking. So, save the best to last. So, that's the good news. Uh, across the afternoon, we're going, to be host, uh, we're going to be joined by a host of industry leaders, including the likes of Casper, Tamara Mellon, Ketchum, Gray, amongst many others. Uh, also, um, as with this morning, uh, you, the audience, have the chance to interact with the speakers and ask them questions. You know how this works. Slido app, or the Slido option in your app. Go find that. Um, so, but to start us off, the four growth and marketing principles you need to create your uni unicorn. Our next speaker started WorldStream in his 20s with basically nothing. It grew quickly to be the world's largest PPC marketing software company, managing a billion dollars of ad revenue or ad spend for millions of dollars worldwide. Covering the four greatest growth marketing principles, which can turn your startup into a baby unicorn, can you welcome to our stage WorldStream founder, Larry Kim. Good afternoon, Web Summit. Thanks for having me today. Today I'm talking about my top three growth marketing principles that you need to know to create your own unicorn. Before getting into all the details of all the hacks and tips and tricks, I want to introduce myself briefly. My name is Larry Kim. I'm totally obsessed with unicorns. Uh, I'm kind of known for creating this company called WordStream a decade ago in my 20s, uh, literally out of a bakery called Panera Bread because, you know, uh, free rent, free Diet Coke refills, free Wi-Fi, you know, <laughs> what else do you need? The company's grown a lot over the last decade. It's about 300 people today managing about a billion dollars of advertising spend for tens of thousands of customers worldwide. Um, you know, this was a fantastic journey over the last decade, uh, growing the business from literally nothing to, uh, you know, tens of millions of dollars. This year it's estimated to do around $55 million in revenues and about $16 million in, in earnings. Uh, and, and basically the company was actually acquired uh, in July of this year, so just a few months ago, for $150 million. Uh, and that was a really a spectacular outcome if you consider that we only raised the, uh, roughly $20 million uh, in, in, in venture dollars. You know, a couple of times people asked me kind of what's that like to have built and sold a business, uh, you know, uh, for, for this amount of money. Uh, honestly, what's it like? Uh, it's kind of a relief uh, because I spent the last decade talking about growth marketing hacks and how to be successful in growing your business. Uh, it would have been totally embarrassing and ironic uh, if, the, if the business was, you know, didn't have a successful outcome. Uh, thank God. Uh, that's a joke, guys. Uh, <laughs> I didn't want to be one of those, uh, I don't know, one of those uh, founders that, you know, gurus who have to write a book on like how not to write a business because you know that's kind of not the the niche that i wanted to be known for uh seriously though uh, outside of business i have two kids uh, one two boys one of them's brand new uh from the summer uh four months and uh, enough about me back to our story today we're talking about uh, mostly unicorns, uh, although if there's a little bit of time, I'm going to squeeze in some marketing in there. Uh, my, starting with my number one uh, growth marketing principle, which is to be somewhat delusional. All right. So basically what I've observed is that there is tremendous power in intentionally projecting a somewhat delusional uh, plan or proposal. Um, let me just give you an example of what I'm talking about uh, in terms of the power of delusional projection. This is actually a screenshot of my actual uh, business plan that I created a decade ago, uh, you know, in that bakery when I was starting my business. You know, it was a crazy plan. I was like basically saying like, you know, I'm gonna, I, I'm gonna create this business with like nothing and we're gonna run this thing up to tens of millions of dollars within just a few years. And just to give you a sense for how 
crazy delusional this plan was uh, at the time. Uh, we were in the middle of a, a global economic recession. I had zero prior startup experience and very little traction, uh, uh, you know, in terms of in terms of product and customers. Yet the plan actually worked. I mean, it's amazing. We do much more revenues and earnings than I ever modeled in that crazy plan. And the question is, how was that possible? Uh, you know, and it's always hard to, to kind of nail it down to just one or two things. But definitely, I think that one of the key things that helped out early on was this uh, powerful unicorn filter effect. And what I'm talking about here is like, if I pitch you that crazy plan, okay, 99% of you guys are going to look at it and scratch your heads and say like, this is crazy. I'm not going to quit my job and join you on this stupid thing, you know? <laughs> You know, and 99% and, and of investors will, will say the same thing, but 1% of people will look at this thing and be inspired. And those are the believers. Those are the 1% of people that you actually need, uh, the only people that are ca capable of creating this crazy vision uh, into a reality. Um, I didn't mention this in the intro, but I actually started a new business last year uh, called Mobile Monkey. It's a Facebook uh, messenger marketing platform. Uh, and, and since this is my second company, uh, I wanted to be a little bit more ambitious in, 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 the, in the delusional projection. And so you want to see my business plan for this thing, the, the, the real business plan? It's kind of funny. I just dusted out the old business plan from 10 years ago and, and created a revenue ramp that generated twice the revenues in half the time. You know, now, if, if you think this is crazy, that's okay. Uh, you're probably not a good fit for this company. But if, it, but if this looks doable, uh, come, come talk to me after the, the talk today. Uh, all right, another crazy benefit of, of this delusional projection is that it actually forces the epic change that is required to be successful. Let me just give you another example of this. When I started WordStream, the product that we were offering was basically a glorified keyword research tool. This business model had a couple small problems, uh, like a very low average selling point and ridiculously high churn. Just to give you a, an idea of the situation I was in, my original bold plan called for a, a price point of $1,500 a month per customer and retaining these customers for four years. The reality was just a little bit short, falling short by about 30,000%. Uh, so this is one of those come to Jesus moments, uh, like, uh-oh, <laughs> things are not going to plan. How do you convert this donkey uh, into a unicorn? Because, you know, you can't, you can't spend years doing this. You maybe have like six months of funding in the bank in the bank. And I can tell you how not to do this. Uh, the way that it, it will absolutely fail is by making small tweaks to your business model. You know, so suppose you're like selling, I don't know, picnic pants. By the way, guys, picnic pants are kind of like the worst invention in the world uh, because you're sort of eating off of your own crotch. Uh, it's like totally unsanitary, guys. Uh, well, a lot of marketers believe that you can, you know, fix these kind of situations by stringing together a, a kind of a, you know, a bunch of dumb little improvements like you know maybe some conversion rate optimization on, on the buy page or a, a sales promo or, or trust buttons or better stock photography but guys this is crazy this will never work uh, there's a huge difference between the, the big delusional changes and little conservative tweaks what I have found is that the little conservative tweaks usually amount to just noise let me give you an example of what I have determined in my career to be, be the reality of of, of, of A-B testing donkey changes. This is a typical A-B test where I've swapped out a graphical element on a web page, and this happens 95% of the time. The new, the new contender takes an early lead in terms of the conversion rate, but over time the contender becomes fatigued and there's an inversion happens where in the, the, the winner becomes the loser. This, the early lead always disappears. Uh, Basically, what I'm telling you is that no matter how much tweaks you do to your picnic pants, the best you can ever end up is being the king or queen of Donkey Hill. What you really want to be uh, is, is have a better, more bolder product, a bolder, bolder strategy so that you can be, be the king or queen of, of Unicorn Hill. And so taking my own advice, we embraced this concept of epic change and actually got rid of the product. You know, this was a really difficult decision. We had spent, you know, 
two, three years building this keyword research thing uh, and millions of dollars in R&D, we forked the code and, and, and started building a new thing. The new, my, my customers thought I was nuts at the time for, 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 for engaging in this change, uh, but it was the right decision. Um, the new idea was to build a pay-per-click management platform and it was totally the right decision because this product had the value to sustain, you know, higher average selling prices and longer customer lifetime values that was required to meet the original plan. So some of you might be wondering to yourself, how can you apply the delusional and epic change methodology into your own marketing efforts? And now just to give you an example, say your CEO uh, tells you guys, hey, in 2019, I need you to double or triple the leads. That's a lot of increase in your, in your lead amounts. If you're getting tasked with these crazy suicide missions, then you are better off making epic changes by jumping on entirely new marketing channels rather than making small tweaks to the existing channels that you are engaging in. And that's exactly how I doubled and tripled the lead volume for my own business every two or three years. We would jump on new emerging growth marketing channels uh, you know, every year or two, switching, switching it up a little bit to take advantage of the power of first uh, mover advantage. Uh, and that is how we made it to unicorn land. Guys, my number two growth marketing principle that I need you to know about today is to find your unicorn growth hack. There is a huge variation in terms of the conversion rates for different offers on the internet. The average thing that marketers are trying to sell converts on the internet at roughly 2.35% conversion rates. These are donkeys. The top 10% of offers of stuff being sold on the internet converts at 11.45% or roughly five times better than the donkeys. So after successfully executing this pivot from a keyword research tool to a pay-per-click advertising platform, I'm ashamed to say that I still had a donkey on my hands. We were offering as our offer a free product trial, like how original, a, a software product with a free trial, like every other software company. You know, I spent two years kind of A-B testing this stupid sign-up page, you know, changing the video, tightening the copy, improving the benefits, increasing or decreasing the size of that, that form. Nothing that I did uh, over two years would ever materially change this outcome until one day I had this crazy epiphany. Uh, the epiphany came to me, it was that people who are signing up for this product are not interested in spending the next three, four, five hours of their lives learning how to use my software. What they want to know is that they're, they have some fear that perhaps that their advertising budget is, is being misallocated somehow, like, like not employed uh, in an efficient way. And they're looking for confirmation of whether or not this is or, or is not the case. So that was the epiphany, and I took three engineers just three months to build an AdWords grader instead. This was a really clever invention. Uh, you know, sometimes the truth hurts. So what we would do is we would grade your AdWords account and kind of say like, hey, Johnny, you know, we looked at your AdWords account and it's like the worst 4% of, of AdWords accounts we've ever seen in your city, uh, in your industry. This cr creates a tremendous amount of urgency on the part of the, uh, of the buyer. It reduces uses sales, uh, sales cycles and improves sales efficiency. Uh, we also made it so that it was really idiot proof to see the value of this product without having to spend uh, tons of time and energy to, 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 to learn all the tips and tricks in the tool. We would also out uh, kind of a villain, uh, like, uh, you know, so this part of the report card would say, you know that agency that's managing your account? They haven't logged into the account for four months and they haven't really done anything. That would really get people, uh, you know, pretty worked up. Uh, guys, when I'm talking about finding your unicorn growth hack, I'm not talking about, you know, getting a slightly better, you know, B2B white paper offering. I'm talking about finding a truly remarkable differentiated offer that drives insanely high conversion rates. We went from a 2% conversion rate to a 40% demo to close rate because this thing is so effective. We tightened the, 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 the sales cycle from 30 days to less than seven days. This thing was a lead generation bonanza. Millions of report cards have been generated by customers on their own 
volition uh, over the last few years. This, in turn, created enormous barriers to entry. There were dozens and dozens of venture-backed companies vying for the same unicorn hill that I was trying to summit, uh, but we crushed them all because no company could have come close to competing with something. So if your offer is a donkey, try something else. Another crazy unicorn hack that worked really great for us was these insane PR stunts relating to globally trending news events. So remember the initial public offering of Facebook stock back in 2012? Well, three days before the IPO, I published some research benchmarks showing that Facebook ads were terrible compared to Google ads. This was such a controversial topic, it created its own news cycle. Tens of thousands of news outlets around the world wrote about my my study comparing Google ads to Facebook ads and how they were so terrible uh, that it generated literally millions of high value links uh, to my website, which in turn allowed us that free AdWords grader to rank competitively for, for words like AdWords, which is tremendously value, valuable. Um, so, so guys, how do you actually find your unicorn? Um, it's actually a little challenging because uh, you know, marketers, they're kind of funny people. They think their shit doesn't stink. Uh, nine out of 10 marketing m managers suffer something called uh, donkey denial uh, syndrome. Basically, they think that everything that they work on uh, is, is a unicorn, uh, when re in reality, uh, it's probably not a unicorn. It's probably like a narwhal or a triceratops or a rhinoceros or something else. Guys, when it comes to finding the unicorn, I'm not suggesting that you try to find a viral hit. That truly is a suicide mission, like one in a billion chance of succeeding. You can find your unicorn by just looking at the top 3% of your existing campaigns and seeing what 3% is outperforming the rest of your campaigns. It's you know, a well-known fact that uh, a small number of your blog content actually produces the majority of your blog traffic. It's the same thing with social media. A few of your social media updates will generate most of the engagement. And same thing with email marketing, where a few subjects, uh, you know, subject lines will generate the, the most opens and clicks. There's this unicorn marketing power law which says that most of the value you create in marketing is coming from a tiny fraction of the campaigns. And so when it comes to finding your unicorn, your unicorn growth hack, look to the past. It's probably related to something that did well uh, previously. Uh, everyone has a unicorn, no matter how crappy your marketing is, some of it will have done a slightly less crappy. Start there, push, innovate there, uh, it'll be, uh, it'll be obvious in hindsight. So for example, for my AdWords grader, I'm like, why didn't we do this two, two three years ago? Duh. Guys, my last growth marketing principle that I wanna share with you today is to make unicorn babies. Suppose we find the unicorn growth hack. You know, after all this work, we finally find the unicorn growth hack we were looking for. What happens next? Unfortunately, marketers, they, uh, they're funny people. They're slaves to something called a dumb marketing calendar, okay? So, you know, we, 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 we found this great performing campaign, uh, and then we, we, we celebrated a little, but then we look back to the marketing calendar and says like, oh, the holidays are approaching. Let's do another, I don't know, holiday-themed marketing campaign. How original. Uh, and this is absolutely the wrong thing to do because what you really need to do when you find a unicorn, because they are so rare and so special, is you need to jump off of the marketing treadmill of death. And instead, get off of that treadmill and make unicorn babies. This is, of course, a metaphor uh, for, uh, for cloning or replicating that successful idea. Remember that crazy keyword research tool that I started up building you know, back in the day that I killed? Well, based on the success of this free AdWords grader, I resurrected it and turned it into a, uh, a free keyword tool. See how like, you enter the keywords there, and at the bottom it says like, hey, here are the keywords, enter your email and I'll send you the, 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 the data in a spreadsheet. This thing has been used by millions of people like every year. Uh, Remember that Facebook publicity stunt when they went public? Well, two years later, Facebook, Twitter went public. Uh, so three days before the Twitter IPO, 
I did the same, same silly thing, coming up with a, a research you know, paper comparing Twitter and Facebook ads, saying that Twitter ads were terrible. Uh, this story was so controversial, it generated uh, thousands of press pickups. It was so predictable. Uh, and of course, the millions of links acquired makes this thing a rank for, for valuable terms organically, like, like Keyword Tool. Guys, if things worked before in the past, it will probably work again in the future. This may seem like a pretty obvious conjecture, like obvious statement, but I have found that 95% of marketers tend to favor new unproven ideas over older proven ideas. And I think it's totally the wrong way of thinking. Guys, thank you for joining me on this epic journey today from donkey land to unicorn land, where we discussed our top three growth marketing principles for 2019 and beyond, uh, which were to project a bold and somewhat delusional vision to find your unicorn growth marketing hack, and then after it's found to make unicorn babies. Can we just take a moment to step back and think about this in a broader context in terms of what does this really mean, all these tactics and strategies. Guys, there are so many unremarkable companies and so many unremarkable campaigns out there. Playing it safe with these conservative, conservative, uninteresting campaign ideas and company ideas is a express ticket to an unremarkable outcome. Instead of doing this, Take, take a chance, stick your neck out there a little bit, come up with something a little bit more kooky, and be a unicorn in a sea of donkeys. Thank you so much, guys. You can download the slides uh, there, and um, thank you very much.